एवरी वन एंड वेलकम टू अ न्यू एपिसोड ऑफ मसाला चाय एंड चेस विथ निशा टुडे इज द बर्थडे ऑफ सागर शाह द नेम इज इनफ आई गेस यू नो एस दिट टेल इन हिंदी सिर्फ नाम ही काफी है सो आई एम गोइंग टू गिव एनी इंट्रोडक्शन सागर इज अ गुड फ्रेंड एंड मोर इंपॉर्टेंटली ही इज द बेटर हाफ ऑफ अ वेरी गुड फ्रेंड अमृता एंड यू नो वॉट टूगेदर they have a child and the name of the child is chess base india and amrita and sagar have together given the same kind of attention love care dedication devotion to chess base india as parents give to their children and you know what i really admire two qualities of sagar one is his amazing storytelling ability that's really wonderful and secondly and more importantly his passion for chess and you know what he can work hard to any extent he can work hard without rest without sleep without food and i think this is really really amazing quality and this is one quality i want to take you know in me this quality of sagar so he is wishing sagar a very happy birthday and you know what sagar the nation wants to know how do you do it how do you you know work so hard and not get tired that's very important question you know sagar is an international master and he has lots of fans in india and all his fans want him to become a grand master and the reason is not that it makes any difference to the fans whether he's a whether he's an im or a you know gm i mean they just idolize him but in many uh, you know uh, youtube channel in his own youtube channel channel in many videos sagar has mentioned that he wants to become a grandmaster not that it is going to make any difference to his life but just for his self satisfaction and we all want him to achieve what he wants in life so everyone wants him to become a grand master so keeping this in mind my today's video is going to focus on grand master so basically we have questions where do grand masters go wrong how do you know they go wrong at all they are so strong so through sagar's games we will see when grand masters go wrong we'll see moments where his stronger opponents made mistakes where his grandmaster opponents made mistakes and uh, why did they uh, you know go wrong why did they make mistake in that situation and very importantly i'm also going to show to all of you a few games from a very important tournament in sagar's uh, you know i would say in sagar's life there was one tournament i think which must be very memorable for him i am going to show to you uh, some games from that and i am sure this is going to bring a smile on sagar's face so let's get started in this game white is 18 year old sagar shah and black is grandmaster ziaur rahman this was played in the year 2008 in kuala lumpur and this position it is black to play and black ziaur rahman is completely better here you know just uh, two points up in this position before we come to this position i want to discuss the point which i was telling in the introduction that we have this question in our minds right i mean i always have this question how to defeat my stronger uh, grandmaster opponent and you know where will he go wrong and what should i do to make him go wrong and for this i would say that uh, tactics is very important and as they say chess is 99% tactics we have to be very very alert at the third hour of the game fourth hour of the game fifth hour of the game it becomes very important to be alert tactically and many a times if someone gives us a position to solve we are alert we know this is the moment something is coming here but in our own game it's very important to know when to look for that moment and we have to look for it every move that is very very important 
and we need to create some imbalance in a position at times that's that is very important that makes the opponent go wrong sometimes it is an attack to the enemy king and if you go for an all-out attack it becomes very difficult for even very strong players to defend so there are different factors you have to put pressure on opponent so here in this position okay black is two points up and uh, at this point it looks like uh, black's king is completely safe so zia thought okay he could just go queen f6 he played the move queen f6 here and he thought okay he can just exchange the queens nothing really is happening his king is super safe he exchanges the queens and he is two pawns up but what was wrong with this move find the winning move for white while i sip my masala chai As I mentioned, tactical alertness is very very important. Sagar found the move. Rook c8 check, brilliant idea. And the point is that this queen is now in front of the f2 rook. Black is forced to take king into c8. Bishop g4 check, and now white is completely winning. The point is after king b8, there is rook into f6. Black cannot take rook into f6 because of a mate with queen d8, king b7, queen c8. And instead if he takes knight into f6, of course, we can see that d6 rook is hanging and everything is hanging in this position. f6 is hanging, so on. So, uh, you know, this moment, queen f6 was a blunder for black and you have to be alert. You have to be alert to spot such moves during a game. You have to ask yourself every move. Is there tactics? Is there tactics? Am I winning? Am I, you know, getting some good shot? And um, that can help you get one full point. And you know what? We have to be very uh, strong physically. We have to have the stamina to be able to think after four hours of intense play after three hours of intense play. This is very important, you know. It can be after 50 moves, after 70 moves or so on. Tactics can come any time. So yeah, rook c8 was a beautiful shot in this game. This position is taken from World Juniors in the year 2010. White is Sagar Shah and black is Ashwin Jairam. And Ashwin is now a grandmaster. But in the year 2010, he already had three grandmaster norms and he was a very strong player at that time also. So this is a position with black to play and it's uh, Sagar's opponent's move, Ashwin's move here. I'll give you two choices as black. So suppose you're black here. Uh, it's a check, you can see that. So will you play the move king to g5 or the move king to h7? Which move will you choose here? I'll sip my masala chai. And here, Ashwin went wrong and played the move King H7. And the problem is, did you find the problem? Here, before I tell you the problem, let me tell you what was the right move. So black should have gone for king g5 and the position is very solid. Now, if you look at material here, black has a bishop and a pawn for a rook. So you might say that uh, materially uh, white is slightly better, but black's position is very, very solid and black can try to play knight d4 next. The C pawn is also quite strong and all his pieces are defending each other. So this is a roughly equal position, I would say, unclear equal kindish position. And uh, instead, Ashwin played king h7 and the problem here is uh, white was tactically alert, Sagar was tactically alert and found the move. Queen e8 with a double attack to the knight 
and the pawn and after the knight moved knight c3 queen into h5 and uh, i won't show the game further sagar soon won the game uh, right now if you look at this uh, he is a complete exchange up and more importantly this pawn on g4 is also weak it's not going immediately because uh, there is a weakness uh, d5 pawn is also a weakness but uh, g4 is a target and uh, white has targets now one move back white did not have target and saga converted this game now again as i mentioned tactics can come anytime and to be alert after 4 hours into the game to be alert after 50 moves 80 moves 70 moves 60 moves it's very very difficult this is move number 48 and uh, yeah it's possible to go wrong you know when you're playing the uh, i mean after 20 30 moves our uh, you know tiredness tiredness creeps in and um, that's when we have to be extra alert and look for tactics spot the right way to win so i leave this game here but it was nice to you know spot this move queen e8 and uh, yeah this is double attack a theme i always tell beginners to look out for it's very very useful to you know watch out for double attack it's a very easy way to win in chess this is a position taken from the game sagar versus himanshu sharma now himanshu is a very strong player now a grandmaster but this was played in the year 2009 and even at that time himanshu was very very strong so this is black to play and uh, it's himanshu's move very important is that sagar has many a times mentioned about imbalance in many of his videos so he also mentions uh, studying shilman's books on imbalance some chapters or books on imbalance and uh, in this position if you look at it the material is imbalanced as in white has knight and two pawns for a rook so we need to keep some imbalance in the position it can be material wise or position wise and also it's always nice to get a chance to attack the king uh, here you know this king is uh, sorry i'll just uh, yeah so this king on g8 is not super safe here somehow the f pawn has moved so it's not as safe as it would be with the pawn back on f7 so in this position himanshu uh, played the move f into e5 which happens to be a blunder instead in this position uh, black could have played queen e6 and this is a roughly balanced position so after f e5 the problem was that sagar spotted a nice move knight d6 he's attacking the rook but more importantly he has other ideas so we'll see we'll see what his ideas are rook f8 was played in the game sagar played a very nice move queen c4 remember i was telling that if there were a pawn on f7 black would be completely fine but with a pawn missing from the f7 square some tactics is always possible so queen c4 check was played king h8 and here sagar played another nice move knight c8 and here we see there's a fork and uh, very important is black has other problems too rook into f1 was played queen into f1 queen a3 was played and after knight a7 we see that black has back rank problems a theme which is recurring in so many masala chai videos of mine so for example black cannot take queen into a7 because of mate on f8 so after knight a7 himanshu played queen e3 check king h1 h6 queen g1 and himanshu resigned so this was a very nice uh, exploitation of some you know fork theme i would say and back rank weakness now these are these are tactical elements we have to keep in mind look at the right moment which tactical theme is working double attack fork pin uh, you know you have to look out for what's working in that particular position friends now i'm going to show 
games from a tournament which is very very memorable for Sagar because he made his second grandmaster norm in this tournament. So this was in the year 2015 and this is the Lil Open uh, and um, white is Manuel Valles and black is Sagar. And uh, you know what? One of the reasons why grandmasters or strong players lose is chess itself is not so easy. In some positions, you have to find the only move and it's not easy, especially if the only move is a defensive move. So finding a right defense in a position is not at all an easy task. And for example, now take this position where it's uh, white to play. Uh, Sagar's opponent Manuel is uh, white. And can you find the next move of white? I think personally, I think this is very, very difficult. It's not at all easy. At least it's not easy for me to find the next move of white. Find a way to defend as white. You, if you look at this, uh, there's a lot of pressure coming up. Sorry, this rook e4 was the last move. So a lot of pressure coming up on e3. And uh, black is threatening. Black is threatening to capture the bishop. And very difficult for white to find something here. So can you find the next white move? Uh, if you can, I will really take it that you're just great. You are an excellent chess player. I'll have my masala chai. So in this position, White, who's an international master, he played King D3, which happens to be a blunder. But before we come to this move, let's come to the right defense for white in this position. White has only one way to continue fighting in the position, to continue to be in the position. He has to play the move Rook H1. Now this is an amazing defense and I'll try to explain why Rook H1. The point is that here if black plays the move, rook into e3 check. Looks like just a bishop is going. But here white has the move king f1. And the point is that this g2 rook is under attack. e3 rook is under attack. And this is the point of rook h1. h2 is supported. King f1. Uh, you know he needed that square to come back to. And uh, now... White is doing fine. For example, uh, you know, if one of the rook moves, the other is gone. So suppose black takes rook into h2, rook into h2, rook into c3 with a roughly equal position. It's imbalanced. It's imbalanced, but it's roughly equal objectively. So rook h1 and uh, one more thing we can check out is knight into e3. But after knight e3, again, white has this move, king f3 and white is threatening to take f into e3 in this position and the point is if the knight moves the g2 rook is gone so for example if rook moves white just takes f into e3 again with a level position so the task to find the move rook h1 was not at all easy but sometimes you have to find just the one defense possible in the position i think uh, Black is still doing good uh, after rook h1, but white is in the game and that is important that white is still fighting and white can hold with stubborn defense. So coming back to the game after rook e4, white played the move, king d3, this happens to be a blunder. Can you find the last move in the game made by Sagar? which sealed the victory for him? This is one of the you know few victories in this tournament which helped him get the grandmaster norm i mean he had a lot of draws with very very strong players but this was one of the uh, nice victories 
and uh, very important one for Sagar in this tournament. So if you want, you can pause. I'm going to show the answer. Sagar played the final move of the game, rook into e3, check, and the point is that after f into e3, rook d2 is a mate. And of course, after rook e3, if you do not take, then uh, if you go back king c2, white, uh, black is just a piece up and is completely winning. So rook e3 uh, ended the game here and sealed the victory for Sagar. Nice pretty finish comes after f e3, rook d2. Nice mating pattern. This was from the same tournament, the very important tournament I mentioned, the Lil Open. White is Grandmaster Burmak and Vladimir and Black is Sagar. And uh, if you look at this position, it's King Pawn Endgame. It's move number 36 now. Move number 35th move of Black is over. Black last played f into e6. And again, you know, I'll answer this question as to where do grandmasters go wrong? So as I mentioned earlier, we have to play a long game with grandmasters. We should be ready to fight it out till the last and be very alert tactically. And even in the most innocent looking positions, tactics can come. You have to spot it if it comes, when it comes, when you get that opportunity. So also very important thing, we need energy. We need energy at, you know, towards the end of the game. It's very important. So here, uh, White uh, Burmakin played the move King E5. And this move happened to be the losing move. White could have played any other move, but King e5 was the losing move here. And the point is that you want to spot. If you want to pause it here, it's very nice. Black played the very alert move a3. And the reason I think that White missed this idea is b a3 is a check. So probably, uh, you know, he just missed this idea. But the point is king c5 here very very good move king c5 i mean instead you know try to understand this that if black goes king into a3 white just comes back king d4 and this is not winning for black so instead king c5 is a winning move here and the point is that after king f4 Sagar played the last good move of the game which sealed the victory for him and the move was king d4 shouldering you're not allowing the white king to come to e3 which is very important black is guarding the square and now the c pawn cannot be stopped white cannot come and stop the c pawn so here burma can resign and the point is if white goes king f3 Black can simply play king d3 further shouldering and the c pawn is unstoppable in this position. It will just queen. So brilliant, uh, you know, alertness I would say in this game. And this gave Sagar a very, very important victory. I think uh, this game brought him closer to the second grandmaster norm. And uh, yeah, very alert move, a3, b a3, king c5. You have to be tactically alert even in pawn endgames. Very, very important lesson to learn from this game. King f4, king d4. And we see the shouldering principle beautifully displayed. The next game is really very pretty. And uh, this is from the same tournament where Sagar made his second grandmaster norm. Lil Open in France, White is Henris, Luke and Black is Sagar and um, you know what I could have avoided showing this game because this game has been annotated by Sagar in Mega Database and I think Sagar also made some video on it at some point but uh, this game is so beautiful and today is Sagar's birthday. I couldn't finish the celebration without showing 
this beautiful game so i decided to show it and you know moreover my youtube has now become a bookmark for me to remember the games which i want to you know see in future and this is one such very pretty game which i want to see uh, again and again so let's see i'll not uh, show too much of analysis but we really should uh, have a look at this one so and also it shows what kind of play is required to make a grandmaster norm and this is very very inspiring so this is one of those important victories which helped sagar you know make the norm so a uh, white played e4 c6 caro can knight e2 d5 e5 d4 i'm skipping the opening part i want to show you you know the main point c3 was played here this is a little bit uh, you know off beat line uh, in karokan c3 c5 b4 and uh, d3 was played here white played knight f4 black played c4 e6 okay it's all i mean we can analyze it for a long time but i'll just show some main points sagar played knight f6 in this position and here came queen a4 so things have not gone perfectly for black i would say and already black is in some difficulty so here the problem is if black plays the natural move knight c6 white can go b5 attacking the knight knight moves and there is this b6 check you come back knight c6 and c4 falls and this is uh, really a difficult position for black because d3 is also going this is falling so in this position sagar made a very difficult decision he decided to give away his knight and he played the move knight p d7 this is uh, yeah so difficult to make on the board right i mean just giving away his knight he had to make this difficult decision and uh, probably he was not sure at this point whether you know he will survive the game but let's see how the game went white took e to d7 sagar took bishop into d7 he's attacking the queen so white thought okay let me exchange the queen c played queen to a5 white thought if the queens are exchanged he will be simply a uh, you know piece up in this position if you look at this uh, black has just one pawn compensation for the lost piece in this position sagar decided he did not want to exchange the queens as he's down in material and he played the move queen to b8 so he moved away his queen opponent played knight d5 and uh, yeah i really like uh, the next move of black and it also reminds me of uh, one episode i showed where i showed my favorite victory and that was against somya so there i mentioned that if we exchange the active pieces of opponent then what he's left with are the not so active pieces so here sagar played the move knight to d5 knight into d5 queen into d5 so he exchanged the active knight of opponent and now look at white's pieces nothing is developed except the queen so it was a very similar situation in my somya game if you if you you know go to episode uh, i think 8 or something so queen d5 sagar played bishop c6 queen d4 was played and very important to understand is that queen into c4 does not work here because black has queen e5 check king d1 bishop e4 bishop a4 check and black is winning because uh, queen d3 is forced and he wins the queen so after bishop c6 white played the move queen d4 sagar defended the c4 pawn with b5 white could have given you know bishop into d3 give up the bishop and complete development somehow but uh, 
yeah we all don't want to give what's ours so if i thought okay i have a piece up what why should i give it up and why played the move a4 but uh, yeah he had to worry about his development and about his king but he played a4 and uh, sagar played e5 here attacked the queen queen went to e3 and he played a6 he defended the b5 pawn white played f3 in this position every time white you know had this chance of taking on d3 sacrificing the bishop giving away the extra piece but white did not want to give it up and definitely now if i give sub black has a good position so white played f3 black simply developed bishop d6 g3 was played the f1 bishop has to come out castles bishop g2 and another very important moment sagar played a very nice move here now i see this kind of maneuvers in uh, you know in different openings uh, we have this in when our bishop is not correctly placed in a diagonal we change the diagonal so i mean i'm a chigorin player i've played that a uh, couple of times you know try lopez uh, ruy lopez chigorin and there we have this maneuvering the bishop from d8 to b6 so sagar played the move bishop to c7 and he wants to play bishop to b6 and uh, we see that white cannot castle in this position because uh, the queen will be lost with bishop b6 and very important is once the bishop comes to b6 it controls the you know huge long diagonal it will be very difficult for white to decide what to do with this king once the bishop comes there so white played the move a5 here and white stopped bishop b6 but look at white's pieces uh, look at the bishop on c1 knight on b1 rook on a1 and i always tell people that your pieces are like your family members now you cannot neglect anybody in your family so how can you neglect your pieces so here if you look at it what's the future of the c1 bishop it never ever comes out this knight on b1 what's the future of the knight i don't see anywhere it can go to so uh, rook on a1 probably will be able to come out somehow but bishop on c1 knight on b1 is really really bad after a5 so white white's move served one purpose of stopping bishop b6 but uh, the bishop and knight would really feel miserable sitting where they were so uh, sagar played queen b7 and very important is you know what is his idea let's see let's see after the next move white played castles here and sagar said okay you didn't allow me what i wanted to do but i will still do it he played bishop to b8 and he wants to bring his bishop to a7 he still wants to occupy this diagonal remember black is a full piece down here he has just one pawn as compensation it's not really enough but i mean not really enough as in in general but in this position this is out of play this is out of play this is also out of play for the time being so after bishop e8 white played king h1 because bishop a7 was coming black played bishop a7 queen g5 was played here moved away the queen sagar played e4 very nice move and the point is of course that all captures are not possible so if white takes here black takes uh, white even gets checkmated in this so yeah rook f3 queen f3 so after e4 white thought okay i need to do something about my f3 pawn so white played queen f4 sagar played rook a8 look at black he's playing with all his pieces and look at white three pieces not in the game white played knight a3 finally developed the knight but it's too late black played bishop to b8 here attacked the queen and white resigned because uh, for example if white goes queen to e3 there is e into f3 and the position is lost completely lost the queen is under attack this is going 
and uh, yeah black, white is losing a lot of material so you know it started as if it was a difficult game for black but black played so beautifully this sacrifice proved to be very good and finally you know a very nice victory for sagar i really like some moves in the game uh, you know let's let's look at the highlights once more so uh, like this is the start position i kind of you know like that here black had to go uh, for knight d7 knight bd7 not an easy move to make but very important was queen b8 and after knight d5 black took this knight exchanged it off you know we might consider other moves that okay we don't want to exchange when we are a piece down but sagar rightly judged that we have to exchange the active pieces of opponent and then what we are left with is only our active pieces queen d5 bishop c6 i really like some moment i'm uh, you know like i i'm bringing that position again bishop c7 move i really like this bishop c7 then bishop went to b8 and came to a7 brilliant brilliant idea uh, just simply very nice game it shows the relative value of pieces it's not important to have 10 pieces on the board which are not playing but you need to have a few pieces which are doing a good job beautiful game by sagar i hope you all enjoyed this video i tried to show in what situations the grandmasters go wrong with the help of sagar's game i also showed what kind of energetic play tactical alertness we require to make grandmaster norms to reach you know that level of success and here's wishing sagar a very very happy birthday and i really hope that his dreams come true may it be of you know becoming a grandmaster or of anything else related to you know his uh, his channel his uh, news page uh, chess biz india whatever so best wishes to sagar from all of us and i hope you all enjoyed this episode bye bye see you